Theory crafting is a very important thought process to improve your gameplay. Lost Ark has too much information where it will overwhelm and confuse people. I wanted to help my friends to start with a simple video to help them understand why certain builds exist instead of blindly copying some. I have theory crafted all my 19 classes from ground up. You can do that also with good references to back it up. I want to teach everyone how efficiently to spend your resources, set realistic goals so you guys won't be frustrated on doing possible mistakes in the future. This video will cover important system points that determines your character's power, example existing builds to review, and theory crafting if I start DNA server. Covering this information in one video is very tough, so I've cut down many details to slowly educate you guys. I will provide more details as NA server's market and progress develops. Well, however, if you need more information in the meantime, fastest way to contact me is through my stream around 7 p.m. PST. I usually stream every day to do my dailies. First, let's determine how your character gets strong other than simply forging your gear. Your character's power is determined by these attributes, combat stats, engravings, tripods, gems, and cards. To simplify, I will not talk about gems and cards in this video. The most important category is your tripods and impact your damage the most. Then your engravings. Combat stats are more fine tuners with your engravings and play style. Think of it like an engine oil. Let's talk about tripods. During your daily chaos dungeon runs, you'll get random broken gears with a tripod implemented to them. You can send notifications on your skill window and options. If you happen to loot some of these gears, you have an option to save these tripods into your library. Or transfer the tripod with a random chance. Tripods are very important. The damage boost is quite larger than you think. Imagine your skill has tripod level 5 on all of the attributes. The percentage definitely adds up. Specific classes like War Dancers has a tripod that increases your overall buff efficiency percentage. Also for classes like Shadow Hunter, tripods enable bonus identity gauge gains, which is crucial for demotic impulse transformation builds. Please keep in mind that tripods are super important. Let's learn how the basic combat stats work. There are six combat stats in Lost Ark. Crit, Specialization, Domination, Swiftness, Endurance, and expertise. I will only go over PvE. You don't need these three stats. It's completely useless. To filter your loots faster, if it ever has domination, endurance, or expertise, don't hesitate to dismantle them. Let's go over the important PvE stats. Crit. This determines your crit rate. Specialization. This is different per class, so I suggest you to read through your attributes. Examples better identity gauge feeling for Shadow Hunter or more shield damage and shield gain for gun lancers. Swiftness. This determines your attack speed, base movement speed, and cooldowns. Note that your max movement speed is 140%. Right now the most updated version you can achieve. Necklace of two combat stats at 500 each. Two earrings with one combat stat at 300. Two rings with one combat stat at 200. Bracelet with two combat stat at 120 each. Note that these accessories are on perfect quality rolls. There are additional 50 to 60 points based on your account achievements as well, your foundation. Additional 10% increase in the desired combat stat from pet effects. You can also get additional stats from cards as well. So accessories need to be cherry picked to optimize your character's performance. You always have a main stat, then your sub stat is balanced off of accessories. For example, for simplicity, Keen Blunt Level 3 Engravement requires you to have at least 60% crit rate to be optimal. So a class like Gunslinger, who has passive 10 to 25% more crit rate due to engravings and synergy, you don't need to go all out on crit like 1800, but about 1400 is enough. So a final perfect build will be 1400 crit, 500 swiftness, and 500 specialization. How do we get that? You can get necklace at 500 swiftness and 500 crit, earring number one at 300 crit, earring number two at 300 crit, ring number one at 200 specialization, ring number two at 200 specialization, bracelet at crit and specialization, and pet buff at crit. This will make your crit base about 50%. Some players change earrings or rings to swiftness for more speedy play, but all of those are personal preferences. Now that we went over combat stats, let's go over engravings. If you look at your engravings page here, you will notice 15 diamond nodes. Every five diamond nodes will enable level one of that engraving. You can get diamond nodes through various things. Five accessories give three to five on engraving one, 
3 on another engraving and 1 to 3 penalty engraving. Note that penalty engraving works in the same way. Every 5 penalty nodes, the penalty level will be much worse. You can also carve an ability stone. It gives 0 to 10 nodes on 2 engravings and a penalty node. Lastly, you have passive 2 slots, where nodes are determined by reading 20 books of each tier. 3, 6, 9, and 12. If you're in the beginning of the game, you may not have 6 or 9 nodes due to not having the books. If that is the case, you can equip both of them and receive level 1 of that engraving. Now that we know how the nodes work, let's go over some of the cool engravings people use. For DPS, you notice Grudge is the only engraving that boosts your damage by 20%. It is the number one most used DPS engravings in the game. Rest of the engravings usually give 16-18%. to 18%. Penalties usually include taking more damage, like Grudge, or heals being less efficient, Cursed All. Normal engravings are grouped into major categories. First, we have mandatory universal damage engravings with penalty. This is Grudge, Cursed All, and Sharp Blood. Legendary books in this category are the most expensive due to all classes needing this. It is recommended for people who plan to make up to 6 characters because accessories in this category are often expensive and this can save gold on the long run. Also to add, this does not apply in the NA servers. The game's way too early to be rushing this. And we got situational damaging engravings. Raid Leader, Supercharge, All Out Attack, Barricade, Master of Ambush, Master of Brawl, Hitmaster. Majority of the DPS classes use one or two of these. For example, classes with a lot of back attack skills like Deathblade can use Master of Ambush for up to 25% increased damage with back attacks. Or Gunlancer can use Barricade because they will have shield on most of the time. And we also have less used class specific engravings. Increased Mass, Master of Tenacity, and Stabilized Status. These are less used due to it being class specific and situational. I will talk more in details later. We also have level 1 efficient DPS engravings. Adrenaline and we have Aether Predator. These are most efficient engravings at level 1. Adrenaline can provide damage and crit at the same time, while Aether Predator can provide damage and defense. Lastly, we have support and utility engravings. Awakening and Expert are your important ones, and Heavy Armor is more important on Bards. Rest of the engravings are preferences such as Max MP Increase, Vital Hit Point, Drops of Aether, and Spirit Absorption. Class engravings is where it gets interesting, where it completely changes the character's behavior. For example, Let's look at our favorite Mayhem Berserker. If you enable Mayhem Engraving, your transformation will be infinite with up to 18% damage increase, 15% attack movement speed, and 65% defense buff, but it has a harsh penalty of your max HP being capped at 25%, and that's very cool. Let's also look at this particular engraving called Master of Tenacity. It increases your damage by 16% when your HP is lower than 50% at level 3. Do you see the connection here? This is how people theory craft when new engravings or balance patches combine Lost Ark. Master of Tenacity was never used until Mayhem engraving came out. Let's also take a look at increased weight engraving. You lose 10% attack speed, but your attack damage increases by 18% at level 3. Why is this interesting? Well, imagine you have a class that requires full swiftness on your combat stats. Your attack speed will be already overcapped at 140%. So the penalty is basically negated, which makes this engraving viable for some classes like War Dancer. Now let's also go over how efficiently you can choose engravings as well. Let's take a look at Deadeye's class engraving called Enhanced Weapon. It provides 20% crit rate when switching weapons at level 1, but 30% at level 3. You would need additional 10 for the extra 10%. It doesn't feel too good to invest into it. Classes like Gunlancer, Gunslinger, Deadeye aren't the main cases for this. However, some class engravings require level 3 as mandatory. Let's look at Demonic Impulse. You don't gain any crit rate at level 1. It only disables cooloff after transformation. You achieve 15% and 30% passive crit rate at level 3. This means you don't really need much crit on combat stats because your base crit is already at 30%, which is insane. Therefore, Shadowhunters go max specialization with sub on crit. Now that we went over the basics, let's realistically theorycraft the build at the NA server. Uh, let's try Gunlancer. I will theorycraft as if I'm actually playing in NA, uh, to help you guys understand. If you're planning to play Gunlancer, I hope this video helps you as a guideline. You can also check my Gunlancer playstyle video to see the two existing builds in the meta. Only legendary items will be available at the release, because it's T3 before Argos Raid. So you're limited to 3-3 on all accessories with less combat stats which is 450 necklace, 270 earrings, and 180 rings. Up to 9-9 perfect ability stone, but realistically I think it would be 5-5 or 6-6. Six, six. 
Six to nine realistic passive engraving books, blue or purple books. So a dream build will be three threes, three threes and a one, but a realistic builds are three one, three three, or two threes and a one, which is 45 to 50 notes or 30 to 35 notes. Gunlancer has a red and blue type build based on their class engravings. Let's take a look at the engravings really quick. Battle Stance. 20% increase in normal skill damage, 30 to 50% additional shield amount, and 4 to 6% damage buff for 10 seconds that stacks 3 times. So as you notice I mentioned earlier, Battle Stance is a really good engravement if it's at level 1. When it's at level 2 or 3, the only thing that increases is your shield gauge and the measly 1 to 2% damage that needs to be stacked 3 times when hit while in defensive stance. If you look at Lone Line on the other hand, it's 5 to 15% crit chance on land skill, 50% crit damage, but cannot use X skill and 100% more shield usage when in defensive stance. In this case, you get 5 equal percent crit chance per node, so it is not a bad choice, but if you had to go for a lone knight, you would need level 3 for that crit. So I don't need to choose if I should go red or blue at this early point in the game. So I would just spend my time improving both styles based on what lucky accessories I'm getting during gameplay. The primary list of engravings I will be looking for are Supercharge, Grudge, Lone Knight, Curse Stall, and Barricade. And additional engravings I should look out for Master Brawler, Battle Stance, Spirit Absorption, Ether Predator, Stabilized Status. And for tripods, you will get a bunch of tripod gears during Chaos Gate runs. I will mark all the necessary tripods and save them in my library or my storage. And I will cherry pick them to tripod level as much as I can. I will aim for main DPS skills first to impact the damage increase the most. It's good to reference other players' skills and builds to properly pick the tripods. For ability stones, I would aim for the two primary engravings I am looking for, such as Grudge and Supercharge, or Grudge, Curse Stall, or Barricade, Curse Stall, etc. Note that class engraving ability stone does not exist. For accessories, Red Gun Lancer, I would keep all the accessories that has Grudge, Curse Stall, Supercharge, or Lone Knight with current combat status, which is Swiftness and Crit. Blue Gun Lancer, on the other hand, I would keep all the accessories that has Grudge, Curse Stall, Barricade, and Battle Stance, with correct combat stats as specialization. After deciding on what you're trying to get, I think it's really important to create a checklist and keep listing items uh, very easily. I think spreadsheets are very good as well. To track what you have and mix and match like a puzzle piece to see which build are actually possible. And if red is possible, you should go for red. If blue is possible, you should go for blue as well. And the quick note on Ether Predator, the reason why I recommended that is because it's the most gold efficient engravement to have as level 1. If we are lacking a lot of DPS, I think it's one of those extra engravings that you should look into instead of having none. So this concludes how you should theorycraft your character. It's a very deep topic with too much information so it was really tough for me to simplify and try to explain to you in one video. Uh, sorry in advance if it was not too good of an explanation for you guys but I hope it helped at least a little bit to clear up some of the things that you'll be facing in the future. So yeah, please feel free to visit my live stream to ask more questions. I can show it to you personally on some of the skills that most people use or tripods and etc. It is sometimes easier to have a conversation to get things to explain better. And so yeah, thanks again and I hope you guys are enjoying the game so far. Great. Thanks guys. Bye.